Hey QBT sellers, it's Mike Fuchigami. I'm the host of the SEO Keypreneur YouTube community. In this video, I'm going to share with you the exact ranking formula that the TPT search algorithm is built on. With this information, you can do some crazy TPT search engine optimization. I'm going to give you a key takeaway that will change the way that you do TPT SEO and TPT keywords. Now, a year and a half ago, I did my first masterclass in December 2022 about the TPT search algorithm. And at the time, I said that no one knows the recipe. So then the TPT search algorithm is kind of like a black box. There's that parable about the elephants and everyone feel a different part of the elephant and they think the search algorithm is different. Depending on our store and our products, we might have different and equally valid experiences with the TPT search algorithm. But in today's video, I'm going to share with you the recipe for TPT search. I have found the developer manual for the search engine software that TPT uses. Now, just because I have this manual and just because I'm gonna share with you the recipe for TPT search, it doesn't mean that we know everything about TPT search because everyone cooks a little bit differently. But if I'm baking cookies and you're baking cookies and we use the same recipe, but maybe I substitute peanut butter and you decide you want white chocolate chips, then our cookies will turn out differently, even though we're following the same recipe. But it's like that with TPT search. I'm gonna share with you the recipe that their search engine uses, but they might have secret spices or blends, or they might substitute an ingredient or add a little bit more extra sauce. So we don't know exactly what TPT is cooking in their kitchen, but we have the recipe and that gives us a pretty good idea. Knowing the recipe is a game changer for TPT SEO. It's kind of like giving students the rubric for an assignment. If they know what to do, they have a better chance of getting to the top. But just because they have the rubric doesn't mean they'll get an awesome mark. The rubric does help them to play the school game. And likewise, knowing the ranking formula for TPT search helps us play the game and improve our product. The information in this video is going to feel like insider information because no one else in TPT land knows about it or talks about it. But all of the information I'm gonna share with you is public. It's not a trade secret, it's publicly accessible. It's just no one has found it until now. I put the links on the website, seotpreneur.com. If you go up to the top, it says TPT SEO secrets. And on this page, I'm gonna to link to a case study the YouTube video and the developer manual that I'm going to show you in a few seconds. So the name of the search engine software that Teachers Pay Teachers uses is called Algolia. How do I know this? Because Algolia published a case study celebrating Teachers Pay Teachers using their software. Teachers Pay Teachers building a rich and flexible search platform to scale a growing marketplace. And then we have a quote, from the data science team manager at the time, we wanna be experts in educational resources, not experts in search engine technology. That's awesome. I think we can all agree with that. We need TPT to have a solid search engine so that teachers find relevant resources to what they are looking for. Otherwise, they bounce away and go to Google and TPT doesn't solve their problem. If I scroll down, I can see that they have been a customer since 2019 and the features of Algolia software that they use are the rules, the personalization, the dynamic synonym suggestions, and the dynamic re-ranking and AI tools. Now, if you are tech savvy and you understand code, you can go to their developer manuals and the manual explains how the Algolia software uses criteria in order to figure out the best relevant results. Not everyone understands code. So this is a brand new series that I'm trying to explain the information that I learned. And an important question to think about before we dive into the ranking formula is why reveal this information? First of all, remember that everything I share with you today is publicly accessible information and you can verify it yourself. I'm a big fan of transparency because I don't think we can make informed decisions without having high quality information. My why is to help make the world a better place. I did that as a teacher until my mental health crisis. And now I do it as a TPT seller coach to try to make my communities a better place. Knowledge is power. Education is power. And if you have information, I believe sharing the information for the greater good of your community is important. That's active citizenship. I'm also a big fan of critical thinking. And I think that's especially important in TPT land because I've noticed we like to share theories until they get repeated so much that they're accepted as truth. 
But the truth is information changes. Not everything works for everyone all of the time. And I think as TPT sellers, we need to be constantly testing the assumptions that our business is built on. So I think sharing the ranking formula helps make the TPT seller community better because a rising tide lifts all boat in the harbor. And that's a really important thing to point out because then the question is, are you in the right harbor? Some harbors are pretty expensive. Can you afford to dock your boat in that harbor? This comes back to public knowledge. I think if we can increase the general understanding that TPT sellers have about TPT SEO, I think that helps level the playing field. Then we can optimize what we do on our product pages. And that helps us define niche unicorns. And by niche unicorn, I mean underserved niches on TPT, where teachers are looking for resources, but they can't find those resources on TPT, so then they go elsewhere. If we can find out where the niche unicorns hang out, we can create resources that helps teacher buyers. And that's the end game. The better that the TPT platform does in matching teacher buyers who are looking for something, with teacher sellers who have an awesome solution to that problem, the better we all do. So let's look at the ranking formula that TPT uses. Here's a video from Algolia explaining how their search engine works. Here is how it works in a nutshell. Initially, all matching records are sorted according to the first criterion. If any records are tied, those are then sorted according to the second criterion. If there are still records that are tied, those are then sorted further according to the third criterion, and so on until all ties are broken and each record in the result set has a distinct position. This is key to understanding TPT SEO, so let's break it down. In their example, on the left hand side, they have a bunch of shapes with different colors, different angles, different edges, and TPT land is kind of like that. As we publish resources on TPT, it just gets added to the bottom of this growing list. Let's say someone is searching for green shapes. The first criteria, the first rule that the search engine applies is it's going to put the green shapes at the front of the list. If we take this back to TPT land and you want to rank in TPT search, then you must show up in the first group for that first rule. TPT search and Algolia search uses a tiebreaker algorithm. That means there are three green shapes here that are tied and two red shapes that are tied. Anything that's tied, yep, you're all green, yep, you're all red, they go on to the next rule. Now, if you're in the red group, if there are a lot of people searching for that term, it doesn't matter if all the other rules you get right. Because you weren't in the green group, you're not relevant to that search. So you have to show up in the first group for the first rule. Later in this video, I'm going to give you a concrete example for what TPT does. But in this example, the green shapes are at the front and the next rule is edge. I think rule number two is counting the number of straight edges. If we're counting the number of edges, the rounded square has four sides or four edges. The regular square also has four edges. The circle has one continuous edge all the way around. The triangle has three edges and then the pentagon has five edges. So in order to show up higher in search, you have to meet the criteria of the next rule. And in this case, it's edge. So I wanna make sure I'm a shape that has a lot of edges. The rounded square and the regular square have changed positions. And maybe that's because the algorithm says, yeah, they both have four edges, but the edges in the regular square are slightly longer than the edges in the rounded square. Remember how I said earlier, you have to show up in the first rule? in the first group, or it doesn't matter. Look at the Pentagon. Even though the Pentagon has more edges and it moved up to the front of its group, because the red group is so much farther behind the green group, it doesn't really matter. You've gotta be at the front of the first group. If you've learned something new in this video so far, can you please like the video? It lets me know that I should make more content like this. Now let's look at the eight rules that Algolia search engines use. Algolia's ranking formula criteria are typo, geo, words, filters, proximity, attribute, exact, and custom. Each one of them looks at a different signal, such as the number of typos, best matching attributes, and so on. And it assigns a score to the record that will then be used for sorting as described. The last one, custom, for custom ranking, is key for good relevance as it lets you inject your own business data into the ranking. Knowing these eight rules 
is a game changer. This is the recipe that TPT Search is based on. Now, TPT can modify and customize the recipe. And we know this because they turned off rule two, which is geographic location. I think that's what TPT did in their personalized search experiment that so many TPT sellers didn't like. They grouped the search results based on how close you were to the person searching on TPT. That's my theory. Let's look at the first rule because you've got to rank in the first group of the first rule. This comes down to the spelling that the teacher uses when they're searching on TPT. And not just what they type, but what TPT auto suggests that they might click on. Here's a real world example that some of us were talking about in yesterday's Saturday staff room Zoom meeting, which is part of the SEOT Preneur Pro Network. We were talking about diphthongs the correct spelling has a silent H. And then the question is, well, which word do you use? Well, here's how I think rule one would be applied. If we were to type diphthongs into TPT search and spell it with the silent H, then the typo rule would say, okay, products that have the silent H that are spelled correctly will show up first because there are zero typos. And then products that have one typo, which could be a substituted letter or a missing letter or an extra letter. So in that case, diphthongs with no silent H would show up here in the second group, which is yellow, because it is one typo away from the beginning. And then the red group here would be words that have two typos in the way that the keyword is used in the product. On the other hand, if I spell diphthongs without the silent H, if I spell it the way it sounds, then the first group will be TPT products that have the keyword spelled that way, which would be diphthongs without the silent H. And then the group with one typo would be diphthongs with the silent H. So even though diphthongs is spelled correctly with the silent H, if more TPT sellers are looking for diphthongs without the silent H, then you will show up in the second group, even though you spelt your product correctly. Let's see this in action. I'm gonna start to type diphthongs letter by letter. So D, I. I can see both of them are auto-suggesting here. And you can see because auto-suggest has popped up and I don't really know how to spell diphthongs, I'm just gonna click on whatever shows up here. And sometimes it's the keyword that's spelled correctly and sometimes it might be the other spelling. I'm gonna click on the correct spelling here with the silent H. So let's look up diphthongs. And what TPT search now does is it highlights the keyword that it's looking for. I can see it's in the title here for the first resource, the second resource, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So all of those resources had the spelling of that keyword in their title. All right, so let's do an experiment here. I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to click on the spelling without the silent H, the incorrect spelling. And now what shows up are products that have the diphthong spelling without the silent H because that's the word that was searched for. So it's in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. If I put these side to side, I can see that the resources are different. So if I was using the correct spelling and I wanted to show up for people who spell it incorrectly, I would need to use that other spelling in my product title. Part of me wonders if this resource on the left that doesn't have the incorrect spelling of diphthongs, I wonder if they added it to their resource if they would show up at the top of the incorrect spelling. Now look very carefully at the title because there's a clue that TPT search gives us. Because they highlight the search term, we can see exactly what the search engine is thinking about. In this case, when I search for diphthongs spelled the incorrect way, I can see this first resource here has the correct spelling at the beginning, but it's not highlighted by TPT search. So it played no impact from a search engine optimization perspective. The reason why this resource showed up at the top is because it has diphthongs in here. The takeaway here is to use both spellings in your title. Another example would be color and color. Now it's a little bit more complex than that because the two spellings of color might be set up in the system as synonyms or related words. So now I'm curious, I'm just gonna type C-O-L. So coloring sheets without the U 
shows up here. Let's just search that up here, coloring sheets. And now in a new window, I'm gonna type color with a U and I see coloring sheets being auto-suggested. Now looking closer at the results, even though we search for coloring sheets with a U, what TPT is highlighting is coloring without the U. So that means that TPT has a rule somewhere that says if it's spelled C-O-L-O-U-R, just automatically replace it with C-O-L-O-R. So that's an example of how even though we might know the recipe, we don't know exactly how the meal is going to be made. If we take it back to the diphthong versus diphthongs example, I think at this stage of the game, you should be using both spellings in the title because TPT doesn't recognize it as the same word. But it's going to be hard spelling the word incorrectly. So in the product cover, use the correct term, otherwise you break trust in your audience that you know what you're talking about. Can you hit subscribe if you learn something new or if you want more episodes like this. I'm thinking about doing a new series and publishing an episode on TPT SEO secrets every Sunday. So next week, we'll look at a different rule. If there's a term up here that you don't get, can you please ask a question? Because that'll help me decide which rule to cover next. Now, when you're doing keyword research, it can take time going through all the pages and scrolling down to the bottom to try to find patterns. And in business, there's always a cost. We either pay in time or we pay in money. If you want to save time, I have a $10 keyword research tool to speed up the process. If you go to seotpreneur.com and you click on TPT Seller SEO Tools, here are the different Google Sheet tools that we have so far. Here we go, SEO Keyword Ranking Tool for TPT Sellers. See where you rank for any keyword in TPT Search and get competitor insights while you're at it. So I'm gonna click on get the SEO keyword tool. It'll take me to this product page where it says it's $79.99. But Mike, you said it was 10 bucks. It is 10 bucks. Just scroll down and get the ultimate bundle, which is $9.99 right now. When I download the resource, I get a PDF, which has a one-click copy link to make a copy of the Google Sheet tool. Now, Google Sheets is like Google Docs. If you don't share the resource with people, no one else can access the information inside. This tool has to crawl the internet. So that's why we need to give access to the internet. Some formulas are trying to send and receive data from external parties. And please check the terms of service to make sure you're comfortable with what this tool does. I'm going to click on keyword ranking. I'm going to type diphthongs spelled incorrectly. I'm going to click allow access. And this tool connected to the internet looked at the first 10 search pages for the keyword diphthongs. I can scroll down and see all of the results. So I can quickly glance at the titles to see what people are using. But more importantly, I can see the average number of reviews on the first page. And I can see the average price of my competitors is four bucks. And Paula pointed out when she left a review, this is a great tool that has saved me tons of time. I no longer have to scroll down TPT pages to see where my products rank. Now, I don't have any resources about diphthongs, but if I wanted to do some competitor research, I could see what the store name is for the first resource and type that in the store name up here and it will pull up any resource that this TPT store has for the keyword.